Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome to another day with Spencer here on my personal channel and this week we are discussing the difference between hypertrophic and hyperpigmentation and keloid scars. And the reason why I wanted to have this conversation is because I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the situation that I'm un um, handling right now with the scars that happened um, after top surgery and kind of the differences between the two because I've been getting a lot of comments and remarks on my past videos of what people think may be going on and I just kind of want to settle the score right now and just let everybody know what's going on the difference between the two things and what can be do what can be done to prevent or treat these two types of conditions so the first one we're going to talk about is keloid scarring now I do not have a keloid scar um, the definition of a keloid scar is basically when you imagine a tr trauma to the body or an incision like from surgery or something and you have a wound. A keloid is basically a mutation within the body where it makes the body respond to send more collagen than that is needed to fix the wound. So what happens is you get this raised appearance that then eventually mushrooms out to more than just the footprint or the original uh, wound was. So a keloid comes to this big puffy um, almost its own like mass over a simple straight incision or trauma um, and basically takes its own form and shape. Keloids can come as early as 72 hours after surgery to as late as 3 to 12 months post the trauma or surgery. So I'm still not out of the woods so to speak when it comes to if I'm going to develop a keloid scar but I just had an appointment with my dermatologist and after speaking to my dermatologist Typically, people who have had trauma, surgeries, tattoos, piercings, and haven't keloided before, it's a very low chance that randomly they're going to keloid for any other new procedure, surgery, trauma, etc. So my uh, dermatologist doesn't believe that I'm going to keloid. Currently, my scars are not keloided, so um, I am not too concerned with my scars actually keloiding and having to get a revision. Uh, there are three different methods of treating a keloid scar, and unfortunately, they are incredibly difficult to treat. The first is early prevention or prophylactic type of thing. An example of that would be when you have an incision, when you have a trauma such as top surgery, you let your uh, surgeon know that you are prone to keloid scarring. And what would they would do is they'll do the procedure, they'll sew you up, and they'll inject corticosteroids into the incision, which will hopefully prohibit excess collagen, which will prevent the keloid from forming. Now, you'll have to go back many sessions. Usually, this is not covered by insurance. Um, it ranges anywhere from $75 to $150, depending on the size of the scar and how much steroid they're injecting. Um, and then after so many sessions, you let it heal and hope for the best. The things with this is that there's not a 100% guarantee that you're not gonna keloid. There is a guarantee that if you do keloid, it will be drastically smaller than what it would have been without any prevention, but there is no sure possible way that you're not going to keloid. Um, if it is something small, they typically just leave it there and massage it. If it's something big, they can cut it out. They can do laser treatments. They can do radiation treatments along with the corticosteroids. There's a lot of different ways they can try to shrink the keloid or the mass that grows, but there's not really any surefire way to 100% get rid of it unless you're lucky and the corticosteroids work. So that is keloid scarring. It usually affects people of African and Asian descent. However, there are 10% of white people that also are, are pre-exposed to keloid scarring. And typically it happens to people that already have had some type of injury or surgery or trauma to their body and they know that they're prone to keloid scars. So I do not have keloid scars. I appreciate everybody giving me some information on keloid scarring, but that is not something I'm currently battling or worrying about. Um, especially not this moment, but that is just a little insight of what keloid scars are. Usually one person can tell that they have a keloid scar because the keloid will actually take the entirety of the incision. Now I'm going to show you my chest and you're going to see that there are flat areas along my incision line as well as raised areas. So I don't really have the presentation of a keloid scar because one, it doesn't expand past the footprint of the incision and two, it doesn't, it doesn't um, affect the entire incision. So keloid scars, real quick, 
down and dirty, there you go. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is what I actually have, which is a hypertrophic scar as well as hyperpigmentation. Now, hypertrophic scar simply means that there is a raised scar. Um, so there is some trauma done to the body, surgery, and the body sent too much collagen and that caused the scar to be raised. Now, I have a raised scar due to an allergic reaction I had to the Steri strips, which is a common response when people have allergic reactions um, to skin, etc. It gets irritated, it gets raged, uh, raised, it gets it's inflamed, things like that. So my incisions are currently raised. Um, however, the allergic reaction is under control. If you were actually able to like touch my incisions, what you will be feeling would be the sutures or stitches that are currently underneath that have not dissolved yet. Sutures roughly take anywhere from six weeks to four months to fully dissolve. So I won't really know if that in those um, scar lines will go down until those sutures dissolve, but um, my dermatologist is um, pretty confident that they will. Um, the presentation of my scars look great right now. It's healing great right now. So they're not too concerned about how it's gonna, um, that it's gonna keloid or anything or that it's gonna remain hypertrophic. But I am treating both the hypertrophic scars as well as the hyperpigmentation left over by the allergic reaction um, to minimize any chance that it does become a hypertrophic scar or a raised scar. So my nipples are great. My nipples aren't raised and haven't been affected, mostly because they weren't covered by the steri strips. So there's nothing going on with my nipples. Um, they are pink, but they're currently getting their pigment back. It can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months for pigment to fully come back. And sometimes pigment doesn't return. I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, I really, really, really don't want pink nipples, but I can always just get them uh, medically tattooed later, which is a great alternative and makes it look almost like as normal as possible. So I'm not too concerned with that. Um, currently, how I'm going to treat my um, hyperpigmentation as well as the um, hypertrophic scarring is with a series of something called hydroquin hydroquinone and laser therapy. So a lot of people have their pros and cons of hydroquinone. I'm going to give a completely different video on hydroquinone and why um, it's banned in certain countries and the, the pros and cons and the conflict around it. But right now, I'm just letting you know that my current treatment plan is on May 15th. I will be, no, 14th, that's Monday. May 14th, I will be starting hydroquinone and laser therapy to reduce the um, discoloration of my scars. Now, currently, that's going to take roughly six weeks to show any type of improvement, if there is any improvement at all. My dermatologist seems to be very confident in the treatment plan that she's picked, and I'm pretty confident in that as well, that there will be drastic uh, changes. So I'm not going to update until I am three weeks within that process, so you're not going to see me for roughly about a month. But um, currently, I'll show you what my scars look like. I am four weeks as of today post-top surgery with Dr. Doolin in Plano, Texas. The contouring is fantastic. The nipple placement is fantastic. The nipple size is fantastic, at least for me. The only thing that I have a problem with is obviously the incisions, which is what I'm currently getting treated with everything. So here's what my incisions look like now, um, four weeks post-op. All this coloration right here that is literally in the size of a steri strip is the hyperpigmentation due to the allergic reaction. Um, this right here is like healed skin and then around it was a hyperpigmentation. So that's all that's going to be treated with the um, hydroquinine, hydroquinone um, properties and laser treatment. You can see that it's a little ruffly right here. If you feel this right here, this is literally, I mean, you can still see a stitch. This is literally the suture that's under the skin. So I'm not too concerned about this bunching. Um, massaging this bunching will let it go away in a couple of weeks. Um, and then I wish this showed better on camera, but it really doesn't. Um, this is actually flat. This is flat. This is a little bumpy. Like I said, that's the sutures. That's the sutures. And then this is where like you have the hardest bump, the hardest knot. And I was instructed that this is where he tied off the suture. So it's a knot and probably surrounded by scar tissue. So that is to be expected. On this side, again, the hardest knot is towards the sternum. And this is pretty um, raised right here, but this all in the back is flat. So it doesn't really show the presentation of keloid scar because it's just within the incision line. It didn't grow out 
of the incision line. And then this darkness right here is the hypertrophic, I'm sorry, is the hyperpigmentation due to the um, allergic reaction. So this is what my chest looks like one month post-op. I'm super happy about it. People ask to see my nipples, so I'll show you real quick. Oh, uh, this came off. Uh, I gotta get a new one. So these are my nipples, um, four weeks post-op. Uh, they're great. This one's getting a little more pigment faster than this one, but I'm getting more rotation with this one than this one. It's kind of funny how, like, the body heals. I'm gonna turn this way so I'm away from the light. But this is what it looks like. I'm really flat, as you can see. I'm very happy with my results. I'm very happy with the contouring. I'm very happy with everything else. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit of what treatment's gonna look like and when to expect me next. So I have a picture of this one month post-op and then hopefully in three weeks we'll see something dramatically different. But anyways, thank you so much for the support, the kind words and everything else. As always, if you have any questions, comments, issues, problems, concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. I am still on hiatus from social media, but I will respond to Facebook uh, messages, as well as Instagram DMs, as well as comments down below. So just leave any comments or concerns if you have any, and I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as I can. But as always, I hope you're having a great week and are gearing up for an even better weekend. It is the someday. It is Spencer. Until next time.